Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, this is me still waiting for the Boeing Starliner to launch, which it has not, which I know, check all the things, safety first. And all of this reminds me of this story that my mom used to tell me. When I was really little, she would tell me about something that we were going to do in the future, like we were gonna go to Disneyland or go on a trip to see a relative. And that when she would tell me about what we were gonna do, I would always say, this time? Meaning right now? Like, are we going right now? And she'd be like, no, in two to three weeks or you know, whenever the trip was gonna happen. And she said my face would just fall like, it's never gonna happen. Cause I apparently only had two speeds when I was little, right now or never. <laughs> because future plans was not a concept that my brain could get behind. So I feel that little girl creeping up inside of me sometimes when there are a lot of delays for something that I really wanna see. This time, no? <sighs> but luckily I am a super mature adult now who has zero issues with waiting for things. So good for me. But in the meantime, I did actually watch one launch in order to appease myself and it was a pretty good one. No astronauts aboard, but it did have that famous jellyfish effect, which I have seen in tons of photos, but I've never actually looked into what that is actually about. So for today's video, we are going to briefly watch the latest launch of the Falcon 9 rocket, which is actually pretty stunning, see the jellyfish effect in all of its glory, and find out what is happening here when we are seeing this. So first things first, SpaceX launched its Falcon 9 rocket in the evening hours of May 17th, 2024. And this set a new reusability record for the company. The Falcon 9 lifted off from Cape Canaveral at 8.32 p.m., sending 23 of SpaceX's Starlink internet satellites into orbit. The Falcon 9's first stage came back to Earth about eight and a half minutes after liftoff as planned, touching down on the SpaceX drone ship a shortfall of gravitas which yes, that is the actual name of this ship, which was stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. The Falcon 9's upper stage, meanwhile, continued carrying the Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. And they were deployed at about 65 minutes after the launch as planned. And I know I've covered a lot of SpaceX launches, but I don't think I've ever really gotten into the nitty gritty of how Falcon 9, SpaceX's workhorse, really works. But luckily the launch was covered by Space Flight Now, which is an awesome YouTube channel, highly recommend them, link in the description. And they did this excellent two minute graphic breakdown of all of Falcon 9's various components about 10 minutes before the launch. Let's go ahead and talk about Falcon 9. It stands at 70 meters or 229 feet tall with diameter of 3.66 meters or 12 feet. The majority of that is made up by bottom two thirds of the rocket, the first stage. This particular booster, tail number 1062, again has flown 20 times before, going for its 21st flight tonight. At the base of the first stage are nine Merlin 1D engines, which burn rocket grade kerosene and liquid oxygen and produce 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Around the engine compartment are black carbon fiber landing legs, which are used to land the first stage on the drone ship. Again, tonight, SpaceX is using a shortfall of gravitas, and this will be the 70th time a booster has landed on that drone ship. Above the first stage is the inner stage. This is a composite structure consisting of an aluminum honeycomb core, which is surrounded by carbon fiber. And that image you see there on the right-hand side of your screen are those deployable hypersonic grid fins. These are titanium winglets that provide stability and steering for the Falcon 9 as it comes back through the atmosphere tail first, like a big old dart heading towards the drone ship. At the top of the interstage are three mechanical latches that attach to the Falcon 9's second stage. At first stage, main engine cutoff, high pressure helium is used to release the latches, and four pneumatic pushers ensure a clean separation. The second stage engine nozzle is housed safely inside the interstage adapter until stage separation. Speaking of that second stage, second stage of the Falcon 9, powered by a single modified Merlin engine called a Merlin vacuum engine or an MVAC engine. It's equipped with a large nozzle, which is optimized for burns in the vacuum of space, hence the name. It produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust 
and it will be fired twice on today's flight to place the 23 Starlink satellites into their intended orbit. The MVAC burns the same propellant mix, that being RP-1 and LOX, same as the first stage. Following satellite deployment, that upper stage engine will ignite a third and final time for a deorbit burn that drives the upper stage back into the atmosphere where it will burn up and help eliminate the risk of creating unnecessary space debris on this mission. Finally, at the top of the rocket, of course, are the payload fairings, which encapsulate the 23 Starlink satellites. The fairings are made up of a carbon composite material, and they are 13.1 meters or 43 feet tall, and 5.2 meters or 17.1 feet in diameter. Now, various Falcon 9 launches have created the jellyfish effect, as we can see here. And a lot of whether or not this happens has a lot to do with the time of day that the launches occur, because it's actually pretty straightforward what is happening. This effect is caused by sunlight reflecting off the high altitude rocket plume gases emitted by a launching rocket during morning or evening twilight. The observer, meaning us on the ground, has to be in dark while the exhaust plumes at high altitude are still in direct sunlight. So the sun is still rising or setting, it just hasn't reached us on the ground yet. Or it has already left us. And this is what causes this amazing effect, which apparently has kind of freaked some people out when they've seen it. It's been said that people think it's anything from a nuclear missile strike to an alien invasion, but no just a rocket launch related phenomenon that is so common it has its own Wikipedia page. So let's see this thing in action. So here is Falcon 9 doing a spectacular launch and I have to say I do really appreciate the variety of camera angles on this one. And here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, engine ignition, and lift off. Lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket. Now 15 seconds into flight. And a beautiful ascent of the Falcon 9 rocket lifting high above Florida's space coast. Then, about two and a half minutes after the launch, we start to see it. Still a great view of the Falcon 9 rocket with the sun hitting it. Stage separation and second stage engine condition. And it looks like we're going to get a really nice jellyfish effect here. Look at that. coming upon bearing deployment. There go the payload fairings. Of course, the Falcon 9 flying high enough that it's still able to reflect the setting sun here. And so we're getting a really nice jellyfish effect. If you like it so pretty, I have to applaud. Just applauding phenomenon. <laughs> and then as they closed out their program, Spaceflight Now did a little recap of some of SpaceX's stats thus far. And I have to say they are pretty impressive. This was the 21st flight of 1062. Well, on its way now towards certifying up to 40 flights. This was the 336th Falcon 9 launch to date the 51st Falcon 9 launch of 2024. This was the 279th Falcon booster reflight or the launch of a booster that has flown at least once. This is SpaceX's 52nd launch of 2024 when you factor in the third integrated flight test of their Starship rocket. Of course, if you're following the SpaceX program closely, you know that they're well on their way towards flight four and they have a fully stacked Starship down in the Boca Cheek area at their Starbase facility, waiting on FAA approval, of course. This was the 115th 
SpaceX orbital launch in the last 365 days, the 186th orbital launch from Pad 40, and the 241st overall orbital launch from this pad to date. Over 50 launches this year already? It's May, people. I gotta say, that's that's a lot. And apparently, they are aiming for a cool 150 launches before the year is out, which will include flight number four for Starship, which Elon Musk is currently saying will happen in three to five weeks. So like mid to late June 2024, if it all works out. I mean, at this point, I feel like that's when Starliner is going to launch. So maybe they can just like race to see who gets there first. Zing. <laughs> Uh, stop being mean to Starliner, Marion. Okay, so that's it for now. As of me recording this video, Starliner is set to launch on May 25th, which, assuming it's not going to be at like 3 a.m. my time or something, is something I would still like to live stream. So we will see. Super... All the crossing, super crossing. I know they now found a helium leak in the module, so obviously Starliner is not going anywhere until they are extremely confident, which I, all jokes aside, fully want them to be. So I will keep you guys posted in my community tab if it seems like this is really going to happen. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Starliner, jellyfish effects, all of it. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.